Hey guys, this is AJ. Skip it up and up. <laughs> and with that intro, it is safe to say that I am Yearn Simmons. Uh... Often imitated, never duplicated, and never supported by my friends. I am the lone ranger heading off into the sunset in a blaze of mediocrity. Oh, That's me. That you had that ready to go. You weren't gonna tell me about that, were you? No, of course not. <laughs> Why did I tell you? <laughs> that, was, that was something else. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. That was that was Hey good. man, try to spice it up, you know. You did you did spice it up and right before we went live. Put a little right? pepper on this steak that we here call a podcast. Yeah, right before we went live, something I want to dive into. We always start talking about each other's weeks and so on and so forth and what's going on in our lives, but Yes, um, we have been doing that since like two weeks ago. Yeah, and it's worked out pretty well so far. So shush, shush. <laughs> anyway. I'm not saying that it hasn't worked out, AJ. <laughs> I feel attacked. <laughs> jumping to imp- fucking, you jumping to conclusions over here. Let's... Wait, did you miss your cardio session? Come on, dog. Uh, no, I, I did, dude. You, you nailed it. I did. <laughs> like I didn't, did? I didn't get up early enough, so I have to do it in the afternoon with my stretches. Bro, my gym. Starting this week has been turned into a 24-7 gym. What? 24 hours a day. So I'm about to, like, after we're done here, I'm going to, like, edit some shit and all that. And I'm going to hit that motherfucker at midnight, bro. Yo, I'm ready. That's hot. My, I used to be part of this. <laughs> oh, that's hot. I used to be part of this really big, bougie gym called, like, Brick Bodies. And it was, like, massive, but there's a lot of. <laughs> there's, brick they're, Body. Because their last name was Brick. Like, their actual. Oh, okay. You know, their actual yeah, the... good God given Christian name was Brick. Uh, <laughs> but so I had stopped go in there because it was just real expensive like you like if you use the towel it costs an extra five bucks a month i was like what is this bullshit so then there was yeah a, there was a fellow independent professional wrestler down the street who managed a gym and he's like you can come out work go work out at mine for free so i was like okay what else you got and he's like everything they have plus tanning and i was like well <laughs> sign me up <laughs> yeah uh so i went yeah. to work out there but then not long after i went to switch to the good old wetro fitness and timonium uh they, the, the brick bodies went 24 7 and the the whole issue of it being too expensive which is kind of whatever but like that plus it being way too crowded was kind of null and void because i could go whatever the hell i wanted to and i was like oh man yeah i mean <laughs> i mean if <laughs> if you get a gym membership offered you for free where you've got everything including tanning Oh yeah, no, yeah. and even now, it's like it's supposed to be twenty bucks a month and an extra ten for tanning, but yeah, for some reason, like I, the one manager left, then the new manager like caught me, and he's like, "Oh, <laughs> like it's went to renew for the year, but your card info wasn't in there," and I was like, "Uh, yeah." So the old manager did this. He's like, "Oh, yeah, okay, give me your card," and I was like, "Fuck." <laughs> then he wasn't there all that long, and someone else took over, and then all of a sudden, I look at my bank account, and like. They cut both prices in half for me, and I was like, hell yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, and bro. And, it, and there's been two more manager changes. Still hasn't gone back, so they just let me roll. Dude, I used to like I used to work out at a gym that like my mom worked at. Like That's where I started working out and everything. I worked out there for like a number of years, right? <laughs> so I didn't pay to like work out there. I just... <laughs> I showed up and worked out and then like people knew me because my mom worked there. But then my mom like stopped working there. And <laughs> so then like I I just still kept going there and working out for free. And then like after a like a couple of months of that, they were like, uh, yeah, we should talk. Like that deal was, was kind of set in effect. Like everybody just kind of accepted you working out for free because your mom like fucking works here. But she doesn't anymore. So I think it's time you start paying for a membership. And I was like, well, what do you got like on offer, dude? <laughs> and then they showed me like their prices. And I was just like, you know what? I appreciate you offering me. I think I'm going to have a look around. And I never went there again. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Told them tough titties. You don't want a big yeah. old massive boy at your gym? Oh, oh, that reminds me. I was part of two gyms at one point. Oh, nice. Because I was working out for free at Retro, and then like I joined this powerlifting gym, 
and like CrossFit gym down closer where it was literally just like kind of a back garage. They would open all the doors and sometimes he wouldn't even be there. You just walk in and the front doors open and you just fucking get to work. <laughs> nice. And it was like 20 bucks a month. Like, and you, I would just text the owner if I couldn't be there for a month and he wouldn't charge me. And then eventually I had to leave. Things got tight. I was just going to stick with the free gym and, and whatever else. And he's just like, oh, yeah, cool. Just let me know whenever you want to come back. Like, I like to have, like, monsters around here. Like, I, like he just wanted a gym with guys who wanted to lift big and get big. And I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> so then why did he want you to stay? Yeah, I don't know. I was definitely not big at the time. Yeah, I was about to – because this, this seems like it was a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. It was probably <laughs> oh, after like, my first WXW I, tour, so I was pretty skinny fat. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you you were still like decently sized back then. I was thinking it was like before that when you were like young, young. You know what I mean? When you yeah. still like maybe had like semi long hair and stuff. Oh so. yeah. No, not even not even then. But to be fair, like the difference in body type between those two AJs isn't that significantly different. Really? Yeah. I guess. I think so. I don't know. Like, the changes I've made from 2018 to 2020 are way crazier than the changes made from 2010 to 2018, I think. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree with that. Yeah. yeah. But, and then the only, more changes are coming. More storms are, oh shit, what the fuck was that alert? Oh, Miles Oracle, thank you for subscribing or resubscribing. That's 15 months. I usually don't shout that out on the podcast, but god damn, we're going <laughs> I was to about now. To say, AJ, AJ, we're doing a podcast over here. Yeah, but also the alert went off, and I didn't get silence together, that before, yeah. so that's my bad. <laughs> nice, dude. And that's for anybody who is uh, listening to us on iTunes now and Spotify and Google Podcasts. You can join us. Is anybody Spotify. actually listening to I, us on there? I checked the number, dude. We're getting downloads. Oh, that's cool. Cause see. like, like I I wanted to bring it up because I actually like I'm interested in that, and I want people to tweet at the what's your Twitter, <laughs> the uh, crown, the crown underscore, underscore, underscore gaming. gaming. Yeah, just tweet at that. Like, if you're listening from Spotify or iTunes or YouTube, like any of the services. Yeah, that was hard to say. Uh, services that are not Twitch. So. Yeah, absolutely. So, like, and what's really helpful is if you have Spotify and, like, Apple Music or Apple Podcasts or whatever, just subscribe on both and then just give us a five-star rating because it really helps us circulate more and then it just brings new people to this. And for any new people out there... That was the algorithm. The algorithm, guys. Can you do that again? It helps it a lot. Can you do that again but say buttery nipples? Buttery nipples. Yes! (laughs) I just scared the shit out of Kelly. I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> Isn't that easy to scare Kelly? She had, her, she had her headphones in. I literally tilted my head back and screamed it. <laughs> nice. That's... I mean, like, it's that's the thing. Like, that's something I will never understand. People getting scared. Because I'm like Juke Nukem, bro. I got balls of steel. Like, you can't scare me. It's impossible. It's physically, scientifically, sciencically impossible are you also super misogynistic and out of date i am definitely not super misogynistic and out of date i am super cool and hip and trendy and i respect women so much that i hate them but it's not Hmm. like a misogynistic thing i just you hate them because they're so so fucking great yeah it's like i i hate them because how do i compete you hate them because you you ain't them exactly Hmm. You're picking up what I'm putting down, bro. Dude, I'm picking it up. I'm putting it in the basket, and I'm trying to fucking get out the store. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, how has your week been? My week's been all right, dude. I, uh, you know, like, I'm going through the same old grind, you know, that I keep doing where I have a fucking job. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all right. I don't mind it that much. But um, besides that, like, last week on stream... I started and finished playing Super Mario Sunshine because I am what the kids, especially the cool kids, call a speedrunner. Speedrunner, yes. So it only took me four streams to speedrun Super Mario Sunshine. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Besides that, this past weekend I I had like two birthdays, one like for my mom. And one for my not mom, aka my dad's girlfriend. So that was cool, I guess. I got to hang out with my family. I got really annoyed by my brother's kids because they're very loud. 
you know, and it's a, that's okay for like 30 minutes. <laughs> but if I'm around that the entire day and it just never ends, I'm like, brother, do you never get blown up? <laughs> you know, what is this? A fucking 24 hour Iron Man match? I'm tapping out, bro. Like, but yeah. You know me. I have I have a gas tank on me for the most part, but I'm not blowing anybody up. But not long <laughs> after like our feud ended and I came home, I, I worked somebody. Or no, we were yeah, that's about the time and like I worked somebody and like we had a pretty decent okay match. It was fun. It was what is was what it was. But he came to the back and like he was talking to my buddy Logan and he's like, You you good? And he's like, Yeah, it was a fun match, it was fun to work. He's like, oh, but your boy blew me up talking about me and I looked over, I was like, Me? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I, I, I have no idea uh, how, dude. Uh, uh, that ain't happening. I'm Mr. C- I'm yeah. Mr. Cool, calm, and collected. Steady wins the race. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the slowest six minute match you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, like, you and I have worked plenty mm-hmm. that, like, you know, if this was among us, we could vouch, vouch for each other. And we have, and you know, we, whenever we've yeah. been up together and among us, we fucking won. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, but we can vouch for each other on like wrestling wise that like working either one of us, it's pretty chill. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not that hard, <laughs> which is why I like, you know, yeah. because you know, you want to fucking enjoy it. So I like, the, I like getting guys like you where you can put it together in just like a handful of minutes and then you just have the day to pal around, have fun, then go out there and have an even more fun. And then like, yeah. I'll get home and Dude, I'll, I'll work somebody else who's easy. And they're like, oh, man, this took like, you know, five minutes to put this together. And they're like surprised. I'm like, yeah, it shouldn't take that long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember um, like I've, I've worked bad bones like a lot of times. Right. Mm-hmm. And I like I don't really mind it, but it does take a while to put it together. And like usually like with him, like my experience has been that like he always like comes up with like all these alternate ideas i'm like dude we already had it like <laughs> why are you why are you trying to change it you know what i mean but i remember like but like i always like working him because i yeah. do feel like he and i had some kind of chemistry he's easy but but then like for example like <laughs> probably my biggest match in uh wxw was like the 16 carat title match against junior Either that or the Fatal Four Way, right? Yeah, I remember. Were, I was like, when you were saying that, I was thought you were speaking of the Fatal Four Way. Yeah, that was probably you know bigger, but like I, th- I think there were more crowd. But like the Junior match obviously was a big deal as well. Yeah, but like me and Junior put that together in the break <laughs> of the, of the show. Like <laughs> we were just put together like a bunch of like house show spots that <laughs> that we had done a bunch of times. And then we were just like, yeah, you know, let's just take more time here and here. And then I feel like we got 20 to 30 minutes. <laughs> That's basically how that match went. So, Hell yeah. Yeah, that was super chill. Fun times. Yeah. Yeah. What were we talking about before this? <laughs> what, we, what we were doing, like, uh, during the week. So it was oh, your yeah. turn to, te- to tell me what oh. you did this week. Huh. I did a marathon stream with, with Kelly where we simulated our lives on The Sims, and that took some turns. Uh, that'll be up at. Six, I popped six. in. I popped in for that for like a little bit, like before, because I was streaming that day too. Uh-huh. Before I started my own stream, and I could tell like by the time that you guys had been playing for like thirty minutes, and Kelly was still creating her character, and I was just like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I knew that part was gonna take a bit. Like I was well aware. Yeah. Uh, but so I'll be editing that together and I'll be going up on the YouTube. Uh, I started, I announced that I'll be doing Doki Doki literature club as a entire playthrough on, I think I said the 13th of November. Is that like a dating sim? Yeah. It's like a dating sim that it looks like a typical Japanese anime dating sim, but supposedly it takes a turn and just becomes not that at all. So I'm super excited. Okay. And it got some positive reactions from people online. Uh, a couple of people were like, oh, my God, what are you going to play? But then the people who got it were like, oh, my. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so I'm excited to see how this turns out because I haven't had any spoilers. I've just been hinted to that, like, 
like I watched a Team Triple Jump uh, top ten like free games, and this was one of them. And they're like, yeah, it looks like a regular anime dating sim, but I can't really say anything more without destroying the plot for you. But let me just tell you, it takes some turns. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm put it in my veins. That's honestly that's kind of like what I had um, with Undertale, which I streamed like beginning of this year. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Or like. Um, Dragon had told me about it, like Amida told me about it, like ages ago. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and, but it's, it's it's like when Amit tells me about something, he basically spoils everything because he can't <laughs> hide his excitement for something, that's which like, is fine. That's like, like my I'm niece watching movies, <laughs> I'll tell her I've seen it or that I haven't seen it before, and no matter what, she's just like, Oh, at this part, this happens because she's so excited to share it. It's super cute, but I'm kind of like, Hey, darling Mackenzie, like now I don't have to watch the movie. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but the thing is, like, I I'd, I'd forgotten most of it because I did like he just overloads me with so much information that I only retain like ten to twenty percent of it. Mm -hmm. So, um, so like I knew like bits and pieces of Undertale, and then I played it, but like for the most part, it was just like blind. You know I mean? Yeah, and then like that made it like really fun because it's it's kind of rare nowadays, honestly. To go into a game unspoiled? Yeah. Yeah, I've had a couple games that happened to me. Like, I'm a big Metal Gear Solid fan, as you know. Or maybe you don't know. I don't yeah. know. But I, I did know that. I yes. played Phantom Pain, but before I played it, I had already saw something online spoiling a major plot point. But they didn't totally spoil it. So throughout the game, I was like, okay, I know that this is going to happen in the back of my mind. But then the way it happened, I was kind of like, oh, okay. And then its implications for the rest of the story were kind of like, Oh, so that makes sense. And so it wasn't entitled, entirely spoiled, but like for anyone going into the game, never having played any other Metal Gear games before, and like this is their first intro to the story, it would have completely ruined it for them. Ah, okay. okay for me, okay. it has implications that kind of surpass other things and kind of tie up other story points together and help make things make sense if you read it on a deeper level. So for me, I was kind of like, oh, okay. So at least this now makes sense. AJ, you can me. read? Dude. I read real good. I'm actually, dude. I'm proud of you. Dude, I'm really good at reading. I'm just really awful at writing. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, maybe you should every now and then before you tweet something, try reading it Whoa. before you send it out. <laughs> I've, I've, I know. I've, I've been, fucking I've been a bit blew more, your mind. I've been a bit more diligent about that as of late. Yeah, you you've definitely done better. Yeah, <laughs> like that's so, definitely. Improved. Yeah, you've de there's definitely you know improvement, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's still more room for improvement, yeah. but there is improvement. I'll give you a, I'll give you a B plus because there's there yeah. you know, there's room there to get an A. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching. Did, did you ever watch King of the Hill? Was that something that happened over there? I've seen it like maybe a handful of times. Right. There's this one episode where Hank Hill and Bobby Hill go to like the Dallas Cowboys, you know, American football team practices before the season starts. And they're okay. like grading players and seeing how they think they'll do. And like Bobby's kind of a big goof and not really in the sports all that much. And yeah, Bobby's the kid, right? Yeah. And so like yeah. he's like, oh, I gave this person a B plus for this or that. And Hank's like, oh, that's a good idea. And then he's like, and Troy Aikman, which is like their big star, he's like, I gave a B plus two because I think there's room for improvement. And Hank Hill was just like, "How dare you, Bobby?" <laughs> I just got really <laughs> stern with him, and I was, and like that's one of the only parts of the show I really remember because he was so pissed. Fair enough. Because it's just you know Americans I, in their football, especially in Texas. Yeah, the main thing I know about King of the Hill, and it's a super like obscure, weird thing, but that's because I like obviously. I'm huge into Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Is that like the basically like director of the Clone Wars, Dave Filoni? Yeah, worked on King, King of the Hill as well. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, but he worked on I think like Avatar: The Last Airbender as well. Oh man, that show. So he's like he's got a, like a dope ass resume. Yeah, right. You see that clip I posted on Twitter, bro? Of what? Where. I asked if like people knew the name of like the quirky like brother on Avatar. Oh, Do no. you know the name? No, I don't. The name is Sokka. Okay. 
So then when people said it in the chat, I said, Sokka, these nuts. <laughs> You're a legend. Yeah. <laughs> what a I, dude, I, dude, I got him. You know, you I can... got him. A hook, line, and sinker, bro. You know you can use uh, him in Smite now, right? He's like one of the skins. Yeah, he's a skin for some character. I don't, yeah. I don't know if Sokka is, honestly. I know like Ang, I think... Katara and um, oh, it's Zuko a, are. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's not the brother. I'm sorry, I misspoke. Yeah. Uh, so what else happened this week? I'm getting to a good little routine, figuring stuff out, finally getting things scheduled, and you know, everything's everything's going good. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds dope, dude. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. Things are chill. Got a nice balance. My diet has been on point, so I'm miserable. <laughs> uh, like the foods I'm eating are delicious, but the quantity is 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 not pleasant. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but it's all going good. So yeah, now I think this is the part where we're getting. How is Kelly food. doing, dude? I think Kelly's doing good. She's okay. Uh, so we're both handling the marriage stuff and all the different intricacies that go into a Portuguese individual marrying an American badass. And uh, <laughs> all right. it's all right, Undertaker. Yeah. Take it easy, bro. You've done it now. <laughs> oh my God. You've gone and made a big mistake. So I butcher. I can't allow for you, you to, to think, think you, you can, can just, just walk up. away. So turn around and face the face the piper. You're, you're gonna, gonna pay. The time is now. This is this gonna, is gonna be, be your a judgment day. <laughs> Dude, I know all the words to that song. Yeah, me too. Every other every other song, I fuck it up so hard. But that, I got you. I got you, dead man. <laughs> yeah, I'm here for you, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> you can always call on me, dude. I remember you from your, ah, if you hear me. I remember you from your mean Mark days. <laughs> Me, Mark Calloway, oh, teamed up with Big Scott Hall, uh, big old Whoa. master of pain, <laughs> using that sick ass heart punch. Oh, yeah, dude. that's fuck. That's actually right, dude. Fuck. It's so good. I used to watch <clears throat> Mean Mark Callis matches for shits and giggles during my uh, philosophy college class. I didn't. Oh, okay. I didn't do that's well. why you're probably not that philosophic. Yeah, right? I didn't do that well in that class. Yeah, I remember the entire time. It was like this really nice young, uh, like Scottish lady that was teaching it. She's actually she was probably at the time younger than we are now, and so I was like, oh, she seems really nice and, and cool and, and, and like all that stuff. But like, I just remember the majority of the class. Whenever I would look up and she was talking about something, I was like, what the fuck is she going on about? <laughs> and I was like, what is it, stairs and in the illusion of this? What this picture? This picture doesn't even make sense. What is she showing us? I, re I remember, like, there was a time um, where we, like, in high school, had to pick, like, some fucking quirky-ass side subject, you know? Like, you could pick from, like, four or five. I don't even remember what all of them were. But I think, like, one of them was, like, philosophy and, like, that kind of stuff as well. And then, uh, but you could go to, like uh classes of them like beforehand and like kind of like see what they're all about and then like make your choice from there you mm -hmm. know what i mean yeah so i went to the philosophy one because i was like oh that sounds interesting and then uh the guy like starts the class and he like asks somebody like yeah like what's a table you know <laughs> and the kid goes like i don't know a surface with four legs so the guy goes on like his hands and knees and he's like, am I a table? And like instantly I was like, fuck this. And I walked out. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not doing this. You just get I'm up just in gonna... the middle of class and go, no, you a bitch. And just yeah, walk yeah, out. I, I literally walked out. I was just like, I'm not doing this, dude. And I just signed up for a computer class and learned how to make a website. And I made a really shitty website. I got a passing grade. And that was it. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. It was a really bad website. Dude, I once made a when like people still did that like in early my early years of of wrestling, so like 2010, 2011, 2012. Uh yeah. people were like having sites made because like Twitter, like Twitter was big, but it wasn't what it is now. You know, I can't like yeah, yeah. it isn't like it can't. It couldn't ruin your life back then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> although what you said then can ruin your life now, so don't be an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> um, but 
Uh, but I mean, like, if you're just a, like not a shithead, your yeah. life shouldn't get ruined. So <laughs> true that, true that. But uh, I made a website for myself, and boy, howdy, was that shit awful. And I remember my, <laughs> my girlfriend's at the time sister looked at it, and I, and she was like, "Oh yeah, like this is cool. You did a good job, but like, you know, this and this, and like people might want to know this. People want to might want to know this." And I was kind of like, "Huh." Oh, Mm, yeah. Mm. <laughs> the, f- the fuck does she know? And now looking back, I'm, now looking back, I'm kind of like, no, that thing was awful. <laughs> you ever coded a website, bitch? <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. You couldn't walk. I remember, out. like, I remember, like, Tommy End has his own website because, like, this is like this is gonna be like a super weird story, right? So I, I started wrestling and everything, right? And then, like, I was still like working out at the gym that my mom like worked at. And then, like, one of the guys working there, like, he found out, like, from other people. I think I was actually, like, training to be a wrestler at the time. He was just like, hey, like, are you trained to be, like, a pro wrestler? Like, you know, like, he, like, talked to me about it. I was like, yeah, you know. He's just like, oh, like, one of my, like, distant cousins, you know, he's a pro wrestler. I was like, what? And I was like, yeah, like, his name is, well, I'm not going to say Tommy Ann's real name. He might get mad at me, bro. But <laughs> isn't, it, isn't, it Alice, so, isn't it Alistair Black? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Sure, that made me laugh. Sure, but um, but then he he was just like, yeah, like like this guy. I was just like, I don't really know who that is, <laughs> you know. So then um, he like looked them up, and then like because they just had a computer there, like at the gym, and then like he found Tommy N's website, and then he went on it, and like we both looked, and has all these like fucking weird ass just like artistic photo shoots where it's just like black and white but it was just like completely in clothing and like just with people that obviously weren't wrestlers and that kind of stuff and we were like i actually just looked at him and was like you say he was a wrestler right and he was just like yeah i was i'm pretty sure he was <laughs> you know and then like we clicked further and then it, there were actually youtube links to like wrestling matches of his and so it's just like oh yeah like there he is like there he is wrestling i was just like i could not tell for the life of me from like his like front page of his website that he was a fucking wrestler <laughs> you know and i saw him wrestle and i still couldn't tell no oh, I'm <laughs> no i'm kidding but the thing is like what's weird what's funny about it is uh <laughs> i later like obviously i ran into tommy later at shows so I like talked to him about this. I was just like, "Hey, like, do you know like a guy by like by the name of this?" Because he says like he's family of yours. Yeah, you know I mean, and Tommy's just like, "Huh? No, I don't know that name. That might just be like somebody just trying to like fame hound or whatever." Yeah, you know I mean, <laughs> and I was just like, "Well." You know, he looked at your match and he hated it. So I doubt that's it. Like he hate he doesn't like professional wrestling. He's a guy that works at the gym that I lift. Yeah, <laughs> where I lift. You know, and he's like, oh yeah, well maybe like it's all like my mother's side. Like that family's really big. Like this and that. And now he's just like, cause like you know, also like the thing is like my real name isn't Tommy End. And I literally just went like, yeah, no shit, dude. <laughs> like <laughs> people aren't called Tommy End. <laughs> Yeah, well, this, guy, like, this guy's last name wasn't End either, but... <laughs> yeah, I was, and then, like, he just looked at me, like, with his death stare. I was just like, oh, like, you, okay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, yeah, that was cool. Really that's the end of that story. I think that's that's kind of... how I saved Christmas. No, 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 don't you dare. Don't you... No, 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 no. You're not getting out of that easy, but that's a great segue to what people voted on on the poll at the Crown underscore gaming on Twitter. And that is yes. hearing the story, the bloody, nasty, depraved story of how Yerneth and Simmons saved Christmas. Uh, so, I mean, without further ado, you want to take it away, bud? Not really, dude, because I feel like this is like one of those things that I have like very vague memory of. Because want- when, when shit gets bloody, like around me, nine times out of ten, I was a little tipsy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was I was a little buzzed. I had a little drinky winky, you know. So you might have to help me out, like at certain parts. Dude, don't worry about it. I, I got might... you. Like I know the night is a fog for you, so let me set the stage, okay? Yes, please. All right. So it's the Dutch country. 
It's uh, well, that is where I'm from. Yeah, yes. Already started off great. It's just the Dutch country. <laughs> the Dutch country. So you're in the Dutch country. It's called the Netherlands. Uh, and over the ten o'clock news, there's an alert that Santa Claus cannot be found. And it is furthermore, when they do find him a few hours later, about midnight, turns out his elves have turned against him, and they have him at gunpoint at the local Amazon fulfillment center. That's fucking elves, dude. Dude, they they got all up in a roar about Amazon like taking over the world and like where they come in. Soon they're gonna take over Christmas. I wish Amazons would take over the world. Dude, it was a whole thing. But anyway, like that that's God. that's where it was at that time. Where Put where were you at the time? <laughs> Jesus. Huh? Not that. Not oh man, Amazon the the company where you can buy everything online and it's got great shipping. Oh yeah, I never used that. Oh yeah, well they're taking over the world. But anyway, so so <laughs> where were you? Thank you, Ju- Jeff. Jesus. Huh? <laughs> where were you at the stroke of midnight when you found out that Santa Claus had been taken by his elves? And what what made you decide to act? Dude, I was clubbing and bugging. You know how it is. How I do on Christmas. I go out. I tear the town up. You know, I rip ass. And like that's that's what I'm saying. Like a lot of it's a fog to me because I was like, pff, I was getting my drink on. You know what I'm saying? Like sipping that gin and juice, mm. as some would say. The ball of so, juice. but but you know, you know, like you go from you go from club to bar to fucking discotheque, uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever the fuck you, wherever the fuck you want to go. You know, but you go from place to place. At the time, I was like at an Irish pub. You know, and they had like the they have TVs there in case you didn't know, uh, I didn't, and that's man. where I was. <laughs> hey, I got you. You know, and that's where they they showed it on the news, because because I remember seeing that or what the whole Santa elf thing that you just described. <laughs> that I can't remember in detail, but I remember seeing it on news, and <laughs> I remember that like I just remember thinking like, this ain't right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, this ain't right. Like Santa has been there for me my entire life. You know, I remember when I was a little boy, and I went to church every goddamn Sunday. Every Sunday, praise I, him. I went to church, and they kept telling me about Jesus, about God. But the Holy Spirit, they talk about the Holy Trinity over there. Mm-hmm. Every time I would raise my hand and I would say, what about Santa? <laughs> what about Santa? Is He's a holy man in my eyes. And then every time my dad would beat my ass in the middle of church, I would shut up. But then I... You know, I would get home, and there would be a present there waiting for me. And I knew that, like, Santa would have – he heard me. You know what I mean? He knew I was looking out for him. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I would open it up. Sometimes it would be a chunk of coal. I'd be like, Santa, what? come on, dude. Why are you doing me dirty like that? But, you know, I knew, like, it was just a joke between he and I. He's just palling around. You know what I mean? But then um, – so then I heard it on the news. And I was just like, I got, I got to take action. I got, like – I got to stop this. So I went and hopped in my car, you know, and I fucking full throttled that bitch. And then I immediately hit a building and crashed my car. <laughs> what? And so, but then like, I was fine. Is it because you were so, drunk? It's absolutely because I was drunk. So don't guys, drink a drive. Drink That's a drive. what I learned on that day when I was trying to save Santa. I... Learn that you don't drink and drive. That's so a that's not what I do anymore. Now I just text and drive. That's and a Santa thinks that's cool. Absolutely. It's a public but, service announcement brought to you by the crown. Don't drink and drive. Text and drive. Yes. Text and drive instead, but only when it's safe. So <laughs> when you're not actually driving. And I so I got out of my car, I was all woozy, you know, because now that I was drunk, I also had a concussion. But I was like, I got to get the Santa. And I thought, like, I was hallucinating. I thought I was just tripping out. I was like, somebody spiked my drink? Like, what's going on? Because what, as soon as I turned a corner, the sled was there, dude. The sled and all the reindeer, especially Rudolph. He was there, like, five times, I think. Uh, and then I was just like, I just looked at the reindeer. They looked back at me, you know. Like, they, they just, like, turned their head. 
and they just gave me a nod of approval. They were, they were like, you know what? Yeah, you got this, bro. So I, I hopped into the sled and I was just like, reindeers or reindeer, because it's also plural, I think. Reindeer, take me away. And they, they didn't do anything because they were just like, well, where do you want to go? You know, I was, just, I was just like, well, obviously I want to help Santa. Like his elves have turned against them. We got to rally the troops. So we got to get the fucking Easter Bunny. You know what I mean? We got to get the fucking the Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> he hates Christmas. But I knew like if I charmed him enough, I would be able to like turn his hate for Christmas into hate towards the elves instead of Santa. And he would be able to say like he, he'd be able to help me save Christmas. That's one so, thing I've heard a lot about the Grinch is like, he's very misunderstood. Like, yeah, he hates Christmas, but him and good old Chris Kringle, St. Nick, they pals and both yeah. of them, both of them despise those little sons of bitches that work in the shop. Both of them. Yeah, absolutely. You know? So, I was just like, guys, we got like, we stopped by the Easter Bunny, stopped by the Grinch, stopped by Macho Man Randy Savage. We need him. All right. Are you, he, tell, are you telling me Randy Savage to help you save Christmas? Yes. Holy shit. Man, I didn't even know yes. that. And then I was just like, we like, we need one final person to help us on this gigantic quest. But I was like, you know what? You know where this. Where Santa's sled takes you, it takes you to the sky, dude. It takes you way up into the clouds. And I was just like, I know who I'm going to run into there. I know who I'm going to run into there. And the person I ran into was Rayquaza from Pokemon, the Sky Dragon. Whoa. I was just like, hey, bro, I need you. All right? And he was just like, I know, dude. I saw it on the news as well. I was chilling in my tower. I was watching TV. I saw the whole fiasco with Santa. You and I, we go way back. And I was like, I don't, I don't think so. But, you know, that's cool. I Maybe you're misunderstanding me for somebody. You know, a lot of people say I look like Johnny Depp. Maybe that's what, who you're misunderstanding me for. But those are probably the same people that say AJ looks like Jason Statham. I don't know. But, you hmm. know, we had that little conversation, a little back and forth there. It was fun, you know, we palled around, cracked open a couple of beers. It was Saturday, you know. And then, you know, right quasi helped, you know, pull the sled, the sleigh, or whatever the fuck. Uh, <laughs> and then, um, you know, help, help give us that extra little boost. Like, if this was Need for Speed Underground, he was like the nitro. You know what I mean? So... We stopped by the Easter Bunny, didn't need any convincing at all. He was just like, hey, man, I'm here for you. I saw the reindeer. I knew what the fuck was going on. I knew somebody had taken up arms to go and help Santa Claus. Then I went to Macho Man Randy Savage, but he wasn't there. You know, like I was hovering over his house in the sleigh. It's just like, it looks like there's nobody home. And then all of a sudden, as, like, as I was in the sky, from the top, he dropped an elbow on me, dude. And I was just like, oh, my God, Macho Man. Dude. You're insane. And he was just like, yeah. Was he drunk, like, Okay. I mean, of course. We all were. Oh, you know, man. even Rayquaza, he'd been boozing. You know, you know how it is. Hitting those hyper potions a little too hard. So then we went to our final stop. We went to the Grinch. And, you know, it took a lot of convincing, but we were able to get him there. Because I, like, I, I walked up to his house, and I hit the doorbell. And then he opened up, and he was just like, who is polite enough around these parts to ring this doorbell right now? Everybody else, all these fucking shitty little kids. Come up here, they ring my doorbell, they run away, they bang on my door, they run away, they ram a truck into my house, they run away. I gotta take care of all of these costs, you know, I gotta fix my house every time. I hate kids. I hate Christmas because kids 
love Christmas. And then I told him, you know why kids love Christmas, Mr. Grinch? It's because they love elves, because they relate to them, because they're all small and weak and inferior. And they can't handle it that a generous soul like Santa Claus is has has the courage to give them gifts. You know what I mean? Like he has the moxie and he has the funds to like gather all of this great material and give it to other people. Like kids and elves can't relate to that because they're egomaniacal. And Grinch looked at me. And I, I swear, I'm not lying here. He looked at me and a single tear came out of his eye. Single tear came out of his eye. And he told me, I've been waiting to hear that my entire life. And then I told him, let's go fucking save Santa Claus. Dude, he's got your back. Just like I have your back, Mr. Grinch. And, you know, he was just like, I'm, I'm right there with you. And then we walked up. And he was like, what the fuck? Is that right, Quasi? I was just like, yeah, don't worry about it. And then we went over. We went over to the elves. He just beat the fuck out of him, bro. Like, it was, it was, it was a curb stomp symphony. You know what I mean? Like, it was, really? yeah. Is that where they, you got the idea for our finishing tag maneuver from Saving yeah. Christmas? Yeah, Dude, because. I, I didn't know that. I wish you would have told me. I mean, like, this kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Like, a story like this, I, like, at the time, I didn't know if you'd believe me. You know, not sure, but I still yeah, do, but I just <laughs> like that. That maneuver, the Blood Eagle, as we called it, was actually an invention of me and Mr. Grinch. Like he he put the back, like he put the foot in the back and like stretched him out, and then I came with a curb stomp from one side and Macho Man with the elbow drop from the other side. Dear Lord, and that's like that's how he killed the head elf, and then. We saved Santa Claus, but then Santa was just like, guys, come on. Like, I do need the, I need the elves to like create the gifts and everything. And I was just like, Santa, don't worry about it, dude, because elves are magical. They're just going to respawn. And he was like, oh, you're right. You know, they're just going to turn into dust, respawn. They have no memory of what happened and they'll just, you know, work for him again, all obediently and properly, you know. So then we all just went and we distributed all the gifts, and that's how I saved Christmas. That was incredible. Thank you. That was, um, you're a hero to the world. Yes, absolutely. That so many women, children, and families got their gifts that year because of your, your heroic crazy deeds yeah i remember exactly what year it was because like i said i was a little tipsy on behalf of me and the rest of the united states thank you sir for your service you are very welcome i bleed red white and blue and you know red and white are the colors of santa which is why i bleed those colors <laughs> sometimes those white blood cells just come out white it's real weird yeah uh, so yeah, we're 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 wrapping it up here. You guys have heard the story. Do you guys have any questions for Big Old Ernie S and how and his savior saving of Christ, Christmas? It was hard. If you have any know. questions about the story, don't worry. I can explain everything. I have no problem answering any questions. If you see any like holes in the story that maybe you don't agree with, uh, first of all, fuck you. But also, second of all, I will happily answer them. Uh, if you have questions about any other matter, then we will both happily answer those. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, KT wants to know, uh, question, did Hans Gruber still fall off the Nakatomi Plaza building on Christmas? He did. That was just a different year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This, is, this is way after Die Hard. And let's let's be honest. John McClane didn't save you know. Christmas. He saved one building. Like, who ca who cares? Yeah. He didn't distribute all the gifts to everybody on the planet. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but he could have done more. It's just, it's just it, it yeah, the fucking Bruce Willis, dude. I Chen, swear. Chenny asks, how come urine is the funniest MFR on this planet? Can you answer that, AJ? His sheer, I would like his to know. sheer <laughs> charisma, lack of shame, and 
inability to sympathize with others, therefore saying whatever the fuck comes to his head. <laughs> I guess. I I I have no clue. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why I I'm don't so know great. What, yeah, I don't know why I'm so fucking funny. No. <laughs> uh, I think it's because my mind is so fucking scrambled <laughs> that it makes for a really good like improv yeah. scenarios. Yeah. Cause it can, like it just kind of goes wherever the fuck. Like I have no clue. Like, <laughs> uh, I just go where my mind takes me. Uh, KT asks. Oh, uh, Chino asks. Completely off topic. Since Halloween is this week, what are y'all scariest life moments? Uh, when I broke my ankle. When I hit a guardrail with my car. There you go. <laughs> oh yeah, I also once hit like this like street lamp post and totaled the car. That was pretty scary. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh man, are you all right? That was fine though. Yeah. All right, cool. Then. Yeah, but it like it was like cuz like um I had like like it was in this weird like uh half turn kind of thing. Like you know what I mean? Like it wasn't like a real turn, but there was like a slight turn in the road. Yeah. And then I hit like this the side of it, like the side bump. Yeah. And it bumped me up and I hit the post. And then I just slid like into like a bush for like a little bit but i was like heading directly towards the house oh jesus as i was sliding i was just like oh fuck i'm gonna hit that house but then like luckily the car just stopped i just tried starting it again and like driving away i was just like oh okay it won't work so i just went outside and checked in like the entire like front right side was wrecked jesus so that was pretty scary yeah. uh kt asks is a christmas story popular in europe we have a 24 7 marathon of it in america uh, let me see, because like I don't necessarily know which one that is. No, I don't think it is. Yeah, it's a very American thing. Home Alone is very popular. Oh hell yeah, that's way better. Yeah, I guess that that gets put on TV a lot. Yeah. Home Alone, uh, that fucking movie with you, Grant, <laughs> Love Actually. Really? That one's really yeah, that one's really popular. Huh. Probably because it's a bunch of British oh, people. Yeah. You know, and that's like half Europe, so. Yeah, fair enough. But that's half Europe? Yeah. As like, they're, they're, they're not really Europe. they're not really European anymore because of Brexit. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. They're kind of half European. Yeah, but they're part of the continent. I get it. All right. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Well, thank you, big old Ernie S., for sharing your harrowing experience saving Christmas. I know that was very hard for you to share, and it's a very difficult memory, but. Yeah. <laughs> but mainly because I was drunk for most of it. Yeah, yeah, mostly. So it's hard, it's hard to recall, and it like hurts my brain to do so. Yeah, it has nothing. But to do with... I went through a Herculean effort to do so for all of you tonight. Yeah, absolutely. So big shout out to Ernie S. Thank you for that, and thank you everyone for joining. This is one of our bigger turnouts for a podcast, actually. At one point. Uh, yeah, I think so. Too. <laughs> re- really appreciate it. Had a lot of fun doing this one. It'll be up on Thursday on YouTube. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere in between that you like to listen to podcasts, please, even if you listen to it on YouTube or here live, please, whatever you listen to podcasts on, if you do, just go ahead and hit subscribe, uh, give a five-star review. Even if you just use Spotify or one of them just for music, you can still just look yeah, it up and, and say hit subscribe anyway. I don't think you can comment on stuff on Spotify, right? But like, if you, like for like I don't know, any of the other services, like for example, YouTube, if you are listening to it at that point, feel free to like comment. And like give feedback because like it helps us out a lot, yeah. you know. And if like if you do like listen uh, to us on those platforms, like I said earlier, make sure to tweet it yep. to at the crown underscore gaming. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, guys, and have a good rest of your day. Yes. Enjoy. Yep. Yep.